Midjourney now has inpainting with its new Vary Region feature. This is a feature that many have been excited about, and today I'm going to show you how to get the best results with it. Hey everyone, I'm Brian McAnulty, the founder of Heights Platform. We built the first autonomous coach for creators, and you can try it out for free at heightsplatform.com. But for now, let's get into inpainting with Midjourney. Okay, the first thing you want to do inside Midjourney is we have to adjust one setting. Now, this is going to allow us to get the most use out of this new very region feature. So go ahead and type slash settings. And you want to make sure that remix mode is enabled. So make sure that that looks green. What this will allow you to do is when you go and click the very region button to do that in painting is you'll have the ability to edit the prompt that you typed. And this lets you go ahead and change something in the image and write in something new as opposed to it just generating a new version of the same exact thing. So if you've used tools like the beta for Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Firefly, Stable Diffusion, there's some variations of it online where you're able to draw something on this AI generated image and then generate something new to replace it. That's essentially what inpainting is and what is now available in Midjourney. Now it works a little bit different in some ways as far as what is effective or not. And that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Okay. So to get started here, this is an image that I want to do some inpainting on before we get going with this. If you have an image already that you've been working with Midjourney before, and you don't see the very region button, then there's two possible reasons. One is that you haven't upscaled the image yet. You have to pick an image to upscale and then you'll have that option. Two is that if it's an image you upscaled before this feature existed. So if you go back to some old images that you generated, you have to make sure that you generate an upscale again in order to be able to see this button. So what I did here was I gener generated some images of a table setting with an empty plate. This is the one that was most accurate to me that I liked. So I'm going to go ahead and click very region. So once we click that, we have this editor pops up and there are a couple things that we can do here and a couple things to keep in mind when trying to do this to get a good result. So you have an option here to draw a rectangle and to use a lasso tool. And now whatever you draw here, this is the area that is going to be replaced inside your image. Now Midjourney has said that often it will work better to replace a larger portion of the image rather than a very, very small portion. It also will generally work better if you're aiming to maintain the same style of your image and not have it look like something else was inserted or like photoshopped in later, then it's best to only slightly modify the prompt as opposed to just deleting all of it and writing something completely new. And so as an example here, what I'm going to do is I will select a big portion of this plate. There we go. And now I'm going to take the original prompt that I had and I'll paste it in here. What we want to do is we want to put something onto this plate and you'll notice here in the original prompt, it said empty yellow plate. So that's the part that we want to change. And now what I'm going to change it to is this I'll delete with empty and replace that with a piece of yellowtail nigiri, um, put some sushi on it. So now once we've done that, all we have to do is click the submit job button here. Okay. And here is our result. So this is the one that I liked the best. I already upscaled it and that looks pretty nice. It maintained a similar style for us and uh, the shading, the shadows, it all kind of matches. So that's great. But like anything, when you're using mid journey and generating images with AI, don't expect it to be perfect. The first time you may have to go ahead and try a few times to reroll that image and see what it generates for you each time. And especially with the in painting, because it's going to depend on how you select everything and how you prompt it, you may have to go ahead and retry your selections with that as well. So I actually tried a couple other things here. You can see. Um, this prompt, for example, this generation was not really great because um, it had these other things, which was not really what I intended. Um, this one looked the closest of what I was actually going for. But if I was confident in my selection, I could just reroll that and try again. I also tried here putting a slice of pizza on. Um, I made a variation here where this was one that I liked. And then I tried to uh, go ahead and adjust that again and make uh, a blue plate with 
um, the pizza. Um, didn't quite, lead, quite, quite do it there because it made the plate under the yellow plate blue, um, blue and yellow. But yeah, so you, you get the idea. Let's do a, another image here. So this image is more of an illustration. And two tips that I wanna mention that will also be helpful is number one, Midjourney says to make sure you have selected something when you're doing the imp painting that will show the AI the scale of what you're trying to adjust. So they give a really good example where they show a child sitting on a park bench and then they wanna add a pigeon sitting next to the child. But if you just select a small area of the image and you can't tell how big the child is, then you end up with potentially a giant pigeon. So you need to select a little bit of like the area of the child in that case or something else in the image so that way it's more clear what the current scale is of what you actually want to place there. So that's number one. Number two is a tip for myself, and that is if you found an image where you wanna edit it and there are things that you really like about the image that you wanna make sure you don't lose, then it's best to also leave some of that in and not edit it so that way the AI can make sense of what is still there. So in this particular image, an example of that could be that I like the lighting here where it's got this really intense light in how it's shining. Now, if I selected all around here and had the whole entire man covered, then potentially whatever I would regenerate in place of that may lose this lighting a little bit and have some kind of different lighting style. So since I wanna make sure that I maintain that, it would be good to leave some of that in the image. So as an example, what we'll do here with this one, I'll show you here how I'm not gonna select the whole entire thing in order to get a similar style result. All right, so I have my editor up here and now I've already done the selection to save time. And what I'm doing with the prompt is all I did was change it from man to woman. And I did leave a couple pieces of the hair outside of my selection on purpose because I want the person to be in the same spot and hopefully it's gonna use some of that style of the hair and everything around there to maintain a similar style. So we'll go ahead and run this. And this is the result that I got. I'm pretty happy with this as far as it maintained that similar style for me. And you'll see like these pieces of the hair up here is what was originally in the previous image of the man. And now it has the new version here of the woman that it generated. All right, here's another example. And before when I was talking about making sure that you're correctly showing the scale in your image, here's an example of where that kind of goes wrong. Here I have an image of a chef making a pizza. Um, maybe not the most accurate AI image uh, with a couple things going on here, but looks okay for now. So what I did here is I made a selection that was maybe not great at showing the actual scale of the human relative to the food. And so when I generated that, you'll see that this is what I ended up with. So I changed it from pizza to pasta and now all of a sudden I have this enormous pasta uh, that the chef is working on creating. And so in this case, it might've been better to regenerate most of the body of the chef, including the uh, area of what he was working on, as opposed to like just selecting the circle of where the pizza was, because then it can't really tell the scale of how big everything is in the image. So real quick, here's a better version where I started off with the chef preparing pasta, and now we're gonna switch it to the chef preparing pizza. And here's the pizza version, so that looks much better as far as the scale goes. And one more example here where I'm gonna show what may not always work very well, and that is when I talked about adjusting a very small part of the image and then completely changing the prompt. So I'll give you guys just a quick demonstration of what that would actually do. So let's say here that all I wanna do is change her to have blue eyes. So I could go like this and only select the eyes there. Let me go a little bit further, make sure I get it. All right, and then deleting this whole prompt and just saying blue eyes. Now, again, this is what to probably not do. You can experiment with this sometimes because depending on what you're adjusting exactly in the image, it may or may not work, but in most cases, you'll see that this is going to give you a result that doesn't really match the initial image. So here we go. All right, and here's what we got now as a result. 
pretty creepy looking if you take a look at this, uh, especially these two right here, um, these extreme blue eyes that really do not uh, match the photo. And it went from a woman that looked pretty happy to this uh, more demon-like uh, looking uh, photo. So that's an example of where it's important to select enough of the image and also to keep enough of the prompt so that way the style stays consistent. Now I'm gonna show two more examples of this same image where we come up with a okay result and a result that maybe is not so much what I was looking for. Um, first, what I do is I selected the entire area around here, uh, except for the arms, because I wanted to maintain that same pose and that same kind of lighting. So I let it replace the rest of the person in the frame. And I wanted to change it to, again, the blue eye example, but then allowing it to change the entire person as a result. So let's see. All right, and then this is what I got from that with just a couple quick tries. Now, this is still not perfect because you'll notice if you read the prompt here, it says woman with a wide smile and she's not really smiling anymore. So it kind of did lose that, but what it did maintain was the overall style of the image, the overall lighting. Nothing looks really out of place like it did before when we just tried to change the eyes alone. All right, but next, when we go down here, there are two other variations I tried. So you'll see there's two versions here. And now one of these versions, what I did is I selected the in painting and I didn't change the prompt at all. I just told it like, let's redo, but only this part of the image, selected that same area um, around the whole person, but leaving the arms and leaving the background because I like the background. Now, this is not horrible, but I feel like the smile that the woman has here is way, way more extreme than we initially had, where this is like a maniacal uh, laughter of something that she's got going on versus just a very happy smile. And then this version here, to me at least, looks more similar to the original photo and maybe what I was going for. The difference between these is actually this was not using the in painting at all. It was just using the subtle variations feature. And so Midjourney does mention that depending on what you're trying to do, it may be helpful actually to just simply rerun the subtle variations and then see what you can get versus trying to continuously repaint something and then trying to get a result that way. So it does depend on what you're trying to change specifically. In this case, like you could argue a reason for trying to stick with this and the in painting would be if you really liked exactly that background and the rest of the image, but you just wanted to change the person or maybe vice versa. Maybe you don't mind so much if it's going to change the whole entire thing a little bit where you'll notice the shape of the mountains here, the trees slightly different, but it might be easier to get something that is more consistent with the results that you had so far. So for my overall impressions and review of this feature, I'm really glad that Midjourney decided to include it. Previously, if you wanted to adjust your image a little bit, you had to just keep re-rolling it over and over until you would hopefully get the result that you wanted. Now that you can paint and change a specific area, it's a lot easier to get to that final specific goal. And you can also do more creative things like changing pieces of an image until you get to a completely new image. So I really like those things about it though. It can be a little bit frustrating if you're trying to do something really, really specific and it's not quite working for you. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you want to see a more comprehensive, in-depth tutorial all about Midjourney in general, check the links in the description. And if this video did help you, please help us out by liking and subscribing to our channel. If there is something specific that you wanna see about AI, a specific AI tool, let me know in the comments what you wanna see next. And if you wanna learn more about what I'm building in AI and my products, check out heightsplatform.com. For right now, if you wanna see another video, check out this one.